Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> it's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, most students won't have their final exams for several weeks yet, but our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has had to undergo quite a few impromptu tests recently. Yes, our beloved principal, Mr. Conklin, has taken to conducting a series of sudden little quiz shows without prizes to see if the faculty is on its toes. Fortunately, when Mr. Conklin came into my classroom last Friday morning, he found me very much on my toes due to a habit formed in my childhood of sitting with my feet curled beneath me. <laughs> Although it was my free period, I sprang to attention when Mr. Conklin entered. At ease. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, conjugate the word strive, please. Strive. Uh, strive, strove, striven. Now, thrive. Thrive. Thrive, throve, thriven. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Conklin? These sudden little tests are quite disconcerting. A silence, Miss Brooks. We're not finished. Yes, sir. More verbs? Five. Five. Five, fove, fiven. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Conklin. Five isn't a verb. Thank you, Miss Brooks. I knew my visit to your room would produce some valuable bit of information. My main reason for dropping in, however, was to ask you to do me a favor, Miss Brooks. As you know, Sunday is Mother's Day. Yes, I know, Mr. Conklin. Thanks to a special savings plan I started in February, I was able to send my, my mother a card this morning. <laughs> but what did you want me to do for you? I'd like you to take this package home with you and keep it until Sunday morning. It's a little Mother's Day remembrance for Mrs. Conklin. I don't want her to stumble upon it before time. Wonderful woman, Mrs. Conklin, and she's trained our daughter Harriet to be a duplicate of herself. Really? Yes. Between them, they're the two biggest snoopers in the county. <laughs> that makes it unanimous. Uh, I mean, I'll be happy to keep the package for you, Mr. Conklin. Thank, thank you, Miss Brooks. I hope my daughter Harriet remembers Mother's Day. Lately, she's had her mind on nothing but that moon-eyed, calf-brained Walter Denton. <laughs> now, Walter isn't so bad, Mr. Conklin. Of course, he's not a brilliant student. Brilliant? Walter Denton is Madison's gift to subnormality. <laughs> the thing that annoys me most is the way he bounces. He never goes anywhere. He, he always bounces there. Hi, Miss Brooks. I just thought I'd bounce in for a minute. <laughs> well, if it isn't the human handball. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Oh, if I'm interrupting anything, I'll just bounce along and... No, so can... Walter. Mr. Conklin was about to dribble back to his office. <laughs> uh, you were finished with me, weren't you, Mr. Conklin? Quite. Good morning, Miss Brooke. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin. Hasta la vista, Mr. Conklin. I learned that in Spanish. It means see you later. Oh. <laughs> well, no si lo veo a usted primero. What does that mean, Miss Brooks? That means, not if I see you first. <laughs> Now, what can I do for you, Walter? Well, I need some advice, Miss Brooks. It's about a Mother's Day gift, but a very special type of mother, Miss Brooks. That is, well, I know it's impossible right now, but just for supposition's sake, suppose you woke up one day and found yourself a mother. I have a mother. Of course, she's miles away. No, but... <laughs> no. I don't mean it that way, Miss Brooks. I mean, if you awoke to find that you were a mother, what would your first question be? <laughs> what did it weigh, Doc? <laughs> Are you sure, Miss Brooks? Are you quite certain you wouldn't say, How is my husband? Not me. I might say, Who is my husband? <laughs> no. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I'm serious. My dad told me that was my mother's first concern after she knew I was all right. You know, she thinks of us constantly and never of herself. But me, what do I do in return? I don't get out of bed when she wakes me. I'm always late for my meals. I never help her with the dishes, and I leave my clothes all over the house. Well, Sunday is Mother's Day, Miss Brooks, and I've got to make it up to her. 
Well, that's pretty short notice, Walter, but I have a suggestion for you. You have? Yes. Sunday morning, wait till your mother starts to make breakfast. When you're sure she's in the kitchen, close the door quietly behind her. Then? Then gather up all the clothes that you've scattered around the house. Then? Then put them in a big suitcase. Then? Run away from home. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just teasing you, Walter. There's only one way you can make your mother happy, and that's by turning over a new leaf. Well, I'll try, Miss Brooks, but meanwhile, just supposing again, well... What kind of a present would you like if you were a mother? Oh, I wouldn't care much about presents, Walter. I'd just be happy if I had all my beloved children around me. Gee. Well, of course, my mother only has this one beloved child. Me. <laughs> but it's a lovely sentiment. However, I'd still like to figure out a little gift of some sort. Oh, well, what would make a young mother like yourself happy? A young father like Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Uh, which reminds me, Walter, it's time for me to get down to his laboratory and pick him up for lunch. Oh, did he invite you for lunch today? Of course he did, about ten minutes from now. Now, tell me, Walter, were you able to find out what kind of a gift Miss Brooks would like? I couldn't find out a thing, Harriet. But we've got to get her something. What's the good of naming Miss Brooks our mother away from mother if we can't surprise her with something she wants? Now, let me see. We'll organize a committee, pick out a gift, and give it to Miss Brooks. Great, Harriet. Then tonight we'll officially become Mother Away from Mother's Day night. Well, I, I certainly enjoyed that lunch. Our cafeteria cook seems to be getting better. He should be getting better. He eats his meals across the street. <laughs> I meant the food's improving. But now that we've finished lunch, Miss Brooks, I, uh, I have a surprise for you. Surprise? What is it, Mr. Boynton? Uh, guess. One of your guinea pigs died and left you a million dollars. No. Then I give up. Well, Miss Brooks, I, I want you to meet my folks. Why, Mr. Boynton, you've only known me for five years. This is such a... <laughs> I just found out they were coming to town myself. You see, they usually spend Mother's Day with my married brother, but Mom decided that this year it's my turn. To do what? Oh! <laughs> you mean your turn to spend Mother's Day together. Oh, that's right. Uh, you'll love my mother, Miss Brooks. She used to be a school teacher too, you know. As a matter of fact, she worked herself up until she was a principal. You gotta get pretty worked up to be a principal. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. <laughs> and you'll be crazy about my dad. Oh, <laughs> what a sense of humor he's got. You know, he's the one who told me the joke about the quiz master who called out, I've got a lady doctor, but before he could ask her any questions, she stuck a thermometer in his mouth and took his pulse. <laughs> Isn't that a scream? <laughs> Your father sounds like more fun than a barrel of depressed monkeys. <laughs> May I ask you a rather personal question about your folks, Mr. Boynton? Oh, certainly, Miss Brooks. What is it? How long did they go around together before they were married? Nine years. <laughs> I see. Folks believed in long engagements in those days, I guess. Oh, uh, they weren't engaged until six weeks before the wedding. Six weeks? Mm-hmm. Once Dad makes up his mind about something, he's greased lightning. <laughs> Could have used a little greasing the first eight years. <laughs> I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing them, Miss Boynton. Uh, when are they arriving in town? Oh, well, this afternoon, Miss Brooks. I'll have to check them into a hotel for the weekend. I've just got a small bachelor apartment. Yes, I know. You've told me about it. Maybe your folks would uh, <laughs> like to drop over to Mrs. Davis's tonight. I'm sure my landlady wouldn't mind my dusting the living room a little. Well, that's just fine with me, Miss Brooks. Well, that'll give the folks a chance to rest up from their trip and have some dinner before they... Well, before they meet the girl about whom they've heard so much. Why, Mr. Boynton, you mean you actually wrote to your folks about me? Oh, and how, Miss Brooks? I I've written them many times about how gay and youthful and exuberant you are. I am? I mean, you have? <laughs> <laughs> darn right. I remember in one of my most recent letters to them, I said you were... Well, more like a pupil than a teacher. In fact, I think that was a letter in which I described you as a, a great big overgrown kid. Maybe I better take something. 
<laughs> you should have seen the answer I got from Dad. He said, whatever you do, son, don't rob the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Dad. Oh, he was jesting, of course. He loves youngsters. Mr. Boynton, you've given me an idea. What kind of an idea, Miss Brooks? If your father turns me down when I ask him for your hand, maybe he'll adopt me. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, tests published in authoritative dental literature show that when teeth are brushed right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Two years' research at five leading universities, hundreds of case histories, shows that when used as directed, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Yes, exhaustive tests show the Colgate way best to prevent decay better than any other home method of oral hygiene known today. Based on both clinical and x-ray examinations, the Colgate way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in all dentifrice history. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgate dental cream as directed. Think of it. Not even one new cavity in two full years. No other dentifrice, paste or powder, ammoniated or not, no other dentifrice has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. So always use Colgate to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And remember, when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Well, I hurried home right after school and put Mr. Conklin's gift to his wife on my dresser. Then I started to make myself and the house as presentable as possible for Mr. Boynton's parents. First of all, I took a shower and set my hair in pin curls. Then I put on an old oversized house dress which I had borrowed from Mrs. Davis. This intriguing combination achieved the happy effect of making me look like a rat drowning in a Quonset hut. <laughs> then I went into the living room to get things in order. When I got there, Mrs. Davis had just finished vacuuming. Oh, Connie, will you pull the plug out for me? My back's been bothering me lately. Certainly, Mrs. Davis. There. Say, this vacuum cleaner's pretty old, isn't it? Yes, indeed. But it's held up remarkably well. I bought it in 1932. 1932? Yes. This Hoover came in when the other one went out. <laughs> Just so the place looks nice and neat for tonight. You know, I've never met Mr. Boynton's parents before. I know you haven't, Connie. And first impressions are so important. That's why I sent our sofa and all the chairs out to be recovered. What? Every chair in the house is at the upholsterer's, Connie. But don't worry. Stretch Snodgrass took them down for me, and he promised to bring them back by 6 o'clock. Stretch Snodgrass? Look, Mrs. Davis, Stretch may be a fine athlete, but when it comes to mentality, he's strictly a third strike. Why, he's liable to forget where he took the chairs. Oh, I don't think so, Connie. You know how absent-minded I am, and even I couldn't forget the name of this upholsterer. Why not? Because he has a very odd name. What is it? What is what? <laughs> the name. Whose name? <laughs> The upholsterer. Upholsterer? Yes. Look, Mrs. Davis, the sofa and all our chairs are be being recovered today. Well, they can certainly use it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you send them, Connie? Fellow with a very odd name. I never can remember it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it will come back to you later. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go out and back and look for our cat. Minerva? Is she missing again? Mm-hmm. She had a date this morning. <laughs> a date? Yes, I, I heard her making it last night. <laughs> but uh, she should be back by now. She knows how I worry about her. Well, you let me know if she comes in the front way, Connie, and I'll take a look back here. All right, Mrs. Davis. That's funny. Minerva never bothered to ring before. <laughs> Coming! How do you do, my dear? How do you do? I'm Philip's mother. 
Philip? Yes, Philip Boynton. I'm Mrs. Boynton. Oh, but that's impossible. You won't be here until tonight. <laughs> I mean, come in, Mrs. Boynton. Well, you don't have to tell me who you are, my dear. Philip has written so much about you. He has? Yes, he says Miss Brooks wouldn't know what to do without you, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I try my best to please... Mrs. Davis! <laughs> Did you call, Connie? That's Mrs. Davis, Mrs. Boynton. I'm Miss Brooks, such as I am. Uh, we've got company, Mrs. Davis. Oh, she came in the front way, did she? <laughs> yeah, she's right here in the living room. Well, you tell her she's a wicked cat. And... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mrs. Davis, you're a wicked cat and get under the... No! <laughs> oh, you'll have to forgive me, Mrs. Boynton. I, I didn't expect you until after dinner. Well, that's and I'm a perfectly little... all right, Miss Brooks. As a matter of fact, I owe you an apology for not recognizing than you, but it was rather dim in here, and I... Not dim enough. Uh, where's Mr. Boynton? Or should I say, where are Mr. Boynton's? Or Mr. Boynton? <laughs> where is everybody? They had a little trouble parking the car. Oh. Uh, I wanted to meet you first myself anyway. Philip's written so much about you. You must see an awful lot of each other. Well, we do teach at the same school. I understand you were a teacher at one time, Mrs. Boynton. Oh, yes, indeed, for many years. It's remarkable. You still look so well-fed. Are you... <laughs> uh, may we come in? Oh, it's the boys. Hello, Philip, my dear. Oh, hello, Mom. Well, I, I see you two have met. Oh, yes, indeed. We're old friends by now. Well, here she is, Dad. How do you do, my dear? I hear you've been just like a mother to Miss Brooks, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> This house dress has got to go. <laughs> this isn't Mrs. Davis, Harvey. This is Miss Brooks. What? Oh, well, you know what I always say. A bad beginning makes a good finish. <laughs> Not that I'm finished. We happen to be of English extraction. <laughs> hey, say, say, speaking of extraction, I visited my dentist last week, and he told me two of my teeth had to come out. So I said, what are you going to charge me for pulling those two teeth, Doc? Ten dollars, he said. Oh, says I, then what will you charge just to loosen them a little? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a sense of humor. No, it's nothing. <laughs> He's hot stuff, all right. Oh, he sure is. But uh, why are we all standing out here in the hall? Yes, let's all go and stand in the living room. <laughs> Just follow me. Well, here we are. Now then, Mrs. Boynton, if you'll just come over to this lamp. This is a very comfortable place to stand. <laughs> and, Mr. Boynton, you can stand over there by the piano. Uh, I don't understand, Miss Brooks. Where are all the chairs? They're out being recovered. I didn't expect you for hours yet, Mr. Boynton. This is a terrible thing to do to anybody. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but it couldn't be helped. You see, there's a convention in town, and I couldn't get the folks' accommodations anywhere. You know how big my room is, and, well... I wondered if you and Mrs. Davis could put the folks up for the weekend. Why, Phillips, I'm surprised at you. You know better than to whisper in front of others. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I was just explaining our predicament to Miss Brooks. She was saying how delighted she'd be to have you stay for a couple of days. Well, now, that's what I call whopping hospitality. It's a whopper, all right. <laughs> I can't with the garbage, Connie. I just... Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Boynton. And this, contrary to popular opinion, is Mrs. Davis. Oh. How do you do? Uh, good afternoon, Mrs. D. Nice little place you've got here. I've just invited the folks to spend the weekend with us, Mrs. Davis. If you don't mind my doubling up with you, I figured they could have my room. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Oh, dear, the upholsterer. You folks must be tired after your trip. Why don't you go to bed? <laughs> bed? Bed? But it's only 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, she was only kidding, Mrs. Boynton. Mrs. Davis, uh, why don't you take the folks up to my room? <laughs> Well, I could do with a bit of freshening up at that. Yeah, nonsense, Mother. You're as fresh as the day I got you. <laughs> <laughs> cut it out, Dad. Yes, cut it out, Dad. <laughs> Well, Miss Brooks certainly has a comfortable room, Harvey. Yes, indeed. That little cat nap is just what the doctor ordered. Tell the truth, Harvey. Don't you think Miss Brooks is setting her cap for Philip? 
Oh, is that a cap? I thought that shroud she was wearing had a snood on it. <laughs> oh, be serious, Harvey. We both know he'll make a wonderful husband when he grows up. When he grows up? <laughs> <laughs> to me, he's still a baby. You know how innocent he is. Yes, and sometimes I think it's all my own fault. Sometimes I think that by now I should have sat him down and had a man-to-man -man talk with him. Although my father didn't have a man-to-man -man talk with me until I was past 30. And at that, I married you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what's this package on the dresser here? It says, for mother. Must be for you. Oh, well, now, wasn't that thoughtful of Miss Brooks? She got a Mother's Day gift for me when she heard I was coming. I'm going to open it right away. Yeah, well, Mother's Day isn't until Sunday. Now, you know I'd never have the patience to wait. Oh, now, let's see. What? Why, what's this? A black silk negligee. Well, happy Mother's Day! <laughs> this, this can't be for me. Hey, look, look, this card fell out when you opened up the package. It says, for baby from her goody. Well... I'm going to find out just where this came from. Oh, Miss Brooks? Yes, Mrs. Boynton? Would you come here a moment, please? Certainly, Mrs. Boynton. What can I do for you? Well, I opened a package by mistake and found this inside of it. A black sheer negligee. There was a card with it that said, for baby from Goody. Goody? Oh, that must be short for Osgood. Why, of course, that was Mr. Conklin's gift. Mr. Conklin? The principal of Madison High? Yes, isn't he a devil? <laughs> <laughs> he asked me to keep it for him so his wife wouldn't discover it before Mother's Day. Oh, it's for his wife. Yes. Who did you think it was for? Don't answer that. <laughs> I can tell from the position of your eyebrows. My eyebrows? Yes, Mrs. Boynton. You'd better drop them a notch. You're pushing back your hairnet. <laughs> This dinner certainly is delicious, Mrs. Davis. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Boynton. But Miss Brooks is the one who deserves the credit. She prepared it all. Oh, come now, Mrs. Davis. You opened every bit as much as I did. <laughs> Eat it slowly, Philip. <laughs> yes, Mother. Remember, your stomach has no teeth. Yeah, maybe that's just as well. If it got too hungry, you could chew off your suspender button. <laughs> <laughs> He, he always gets me when I've got a mouthful. You had a mouthful. Here's the napkin. <laughs> Philip, you're such a baby. Well, you're right there, Mrs. Boynton. He's nothing but a great big overgrown kid. Now, that's funny. That's the same phrase Philip used in describing you in one of his letters. Well, she is, Mother. You ought to see her around the school. The students just treat her like one of themselves. Yes, indeed. We kids have some great old times together. <laughs> I'm in with Connie. Excuse me, folks. I wonder who that could be. Well, come in, kids. Hi, Mrs. Davis. Davis. We're a committee. It's Walter and Harriet, Connie. Oh, we didn't mean to disturb you, Miss Brooks. Oh, that's all right, Walter. I was just telling the folks how informal we are at Madison. Mr. and Mrs. Boynton, may I present Harriet Conklin and Walter Denton? Uh, how Mr. Boynton, you, you good to know you. And now, Miss Brooks, we would like to present something to you that expresses the devotion and reverence felt toward you by the entire student body. Oh, what is it? It's a shawl. A shawl and a handsome <laughs> pair of knitting needles to go with the rocking chair to which you're so attached. <laughs> Plus which, you have been chosen our mother away from mother. Oh, no. I'll go to the piano, Walter, and you sing the song we've written. Okay, Harriet, wait till you hear this, folks. All set, Walter. The B stands for the books she helps us study. The R is for she's righteous, also pure. <laughs> the O is for the fact that she's our buddy. The second O is likewise, I am sure. <laughs> The K is for OK, she rates a bow. The S is for her sadly wrinkled brow. <laughs> She's motherly, just like 
Elsie the cow. Yes, <laughs> Brooks. We love you dearly. Miss Brooks, that's me. I'll always be Miss Brooks. Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster queen girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, several days later, Friday night came to an end. As I escorted Mr. Boynton to the front door... He was in a strangely mellow mood. You know, Miss Brooks, I'm a man of many dreams. But more often than not, I find I'm shooting too high. Shooting too high, Mr. Boynton? Oh, yes. In, well, in trying to find the right girl, for instance. It seems that subconsciously I'm always looking for a girl who's just like my mother. Attractive, yet sweet and unselfish. Well, don't give up the search, Mr. Boynton. Someday you're liable to find such a girl right under your nose. And I think that's a very nice location. <laughs> What I mean is, when you gave up your room for Mother, I suddenly realized you're not only attractive, but also sweet and unselfish. So, Miss Brooks, instead of just shaking hands like we usually do... Yes, Mr. Boynton? Well, I, I'd like to say goodnight to you the way I do to my mother, with a kiss. A kiss, Mr. Boynton? Yes, on the forehead. <laughs> There you go, shooting too high again. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo, the soft, glamorous, caressable hair, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, Lester White, and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. The CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 